So when I was jotting down some notes on uh, single payer earlier, uh, I looked up the original estimate for Vermont, which was 2.5 billion, and I came to the actual number in the uh, GMC report, which is the Green Mountain Care report, which was 4.3 billion. And then doing a little math, it ends up being about $7,000 per person in Vermont. Now I wanted to shock you with the number, or, or the real estimate for New York, which if you multiply 7,000 by our 19 million, gives you 137 billion, doubling New York State's total expenses. But now I'm told that you've actually exceeded that, and you're saying now this number is going to be $255 billion? Well, first of all, in 2019, we would be spending about $290 billion. Those are hard numbers, or they're a projection from our current spending. Uh, I would bet the Vermont number doesn't include the Medicare program, because the Vermont program uh, doesn't deal with Medicare. Uh, it may well not include what they spend on Medicaid. I don't have your document in front of me, right. so I don't know. So I don't know what they're well, I'm, what, I'm, what they're counting. Let me, please let me finish. Yeah. I'm not saying that health care ought to cost 290 billion in 2019. I'm saying that's what it's going to cost in 2019, and I'm saying that this bill can produce net sur savings to bring it down to 45 billion dollars uh, below that, which I think would actually be. 245 billion now that I think of the math, right. not 255. So those are the numbers. So, and, so you know, in, in Vermont, where they spent $1.8 billion on private insurance or um, government employee insurance and $714 billion in out of pocket costs for a total of $2.5 billion in total health care spending in Vermont, that's a lot less than the $4.3 billion their single-payer health care was projected to spend. So how is this bill different from that? Well, first of all, we're not be, talking about Vermont. $700 we're, billion? We're, we're talking about a state that has, what, 30 times the people of Vermont? I don't know what numbers you're citing or what they refer to. I don't know whether, I mean, there are a whole lot of, and there are a whole lot of differences between the New York Health Act and what Vermont was looking at. I've, I've mentioned several of them. I think what we need to do is not try to grope in the dark, not knowing what we're groping at uh, or what we're, what we're talking about, about Vermont. I think we should talk about New York. If you think the numbers for New York are wrong, show me how they're wrong. Right. Um for the record, I'm getting all my numbers from the Vermont Green Mountain Care report that well, was produced it, by the it, governor. If I may, was in favor you of know, if, care. you know, it, it, it's like if I say, you know, let's give an abbreviated version of the baseball scores: six, two, five, eleven. You know, without telling you what the teams are, you cite me a number. I don't know what that number refers to. Sure. So there may be a number for 4.5 billion somewhere, but who knows what it refers to? Well, it, it was the and when you say, well, it's the cost, I would need to see the document to know what cost it is referring to. And at the end, I would say, you know, it all doesn't matter because you're describing a program for a state whose economy is, tiny, is much tinier than New York that is not, that bears no relationship to New York's economy in terms of how we make our money and how we spend our money. And you're talking about a plan that bears no relationship to the New York Health Act. So I don't know why you persist in talking about Vermont. Why don't you talk about New York? Well, we, we can, but, but just to go on your point with New York having a wealthier economy, New York's unemployment rate is 6.6, .6, Vermont's 3.7, and their per capita GDP is growing far faster than ours. So even though Vermont might be a little rinky-dink economy, when we talk about the per capita economy of the state, they're not doing any worse than we are. So why, why shouldn't we compare it? But let's start here. There's no doubt in my mind that you read the uh, Green Mountain Care report that Governor Schmuel's office put out, but why isn't it fair to compare what you want to do, which is not identical, but it resembles what Vermont is doing, why isn't it fair that we should, or the public should be comparing that? Well, it, it, 
I'll, I'll try saying it again. Uh, New York's economy, the, the earning power of New Yorkers, the income generating power of, of many segments of our economy bear no resemblance to Vermont. The, the plan that we're talking about bears very little resemblance to Vermont. Their financing system is dramatically different from our proposed financing system. Uh, we could go on and on with all the reasons why it doesn't make any sense to talk about Vermont, except if you're trying to avoid talking about New York. No, I, I feel and, like, to use your baseball you know, analogy, you're, it's you're, like you don't want to talk about to, the team that lost. Excuse me, let, me, let me finish. You're trying to make comparisons, but you're comparing not only apples and oranges, you're comparing you know, apples and watermelons with grapes. The two have absolutely nothing to do with one another. Nothing. So why would you persist in saying, well, in Vermont, what number was this way? What about you? You know, Vermont, if you read the governor's report, they assume no savings to be derived from their plan. It makes no sense to say that a single payer system to calculate what it might cost and say we're not counting on any savings. Why would you do that? With all Why respect, would you sir, cite a report that says something like that? With all that? respect, their initial proposal said there would be savings, but the governor's 2000, December 2014 report backtracked and said there wouldn't be savings. But well, originally in 2012 maybe there's or something so, wrong. there would be. Excuse me, maybe there's something wrong with the report you're reading if you think that, in fact, there won't be savings from the New York Health Act. Let's talk about New York show me where in the plan, where in the economic analysis, we go wrong in projecting $45 billion in net savings. Don't talk to me about some other plan in some other place. Tell me where the projections for this plan in this state are wrong. Okay. And I don't think you can do that. Well, no, but I'll just ask you Can you do that? I'll ask it a different way. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't get to ask the questions. I'll be interested in hearing you do that. Indeed. To go back to Vermont, uh, the Green Mountain Care report said that private employer health care spending in Vermont would actually increase by 6%. So private employers, despite being promised that they'd pay less, were actually paying 6% more. And the report said the largest aggregate increase would occur in businesses with fewer than 10 people, and the largest per employee increase would incur uh, in businesses that employ between 10 and 49 people. How are we different? Well, I think the report you're talking about says that that about 90% of the people covered by uh, the Vermont plan would be paying dramatically less in the cost of health care and coverage uh, than they now pay. That's number one. But number two, you're again, you're talking about a plan with a different system of financing with different kinds of coverage, excluding large parts of the system, and assuming, for the sake of argument, I guess, that there would be no savings. So you're asking me to respond about something that bears no relationship whatsoever. You know, why don't you ask me whether New York is going to flood? just like Texas is flooding if we enact this plan. There is as much reason to ask about the weather in Texas as there is to ask me about the Vermont plan. And you still haven't shown me why we should connect the two. And I'm, I'd, I'd, I'd be interested in talking about the New York plan and what the New York plan is going to cost. I'm really not interested in discussing uh, your selected quotes from a report about the Vermont plan, selected quotes where I don't even know what the numbers refer to. Sure. Look, I, I, again, you know, I, I think we have a difference of opinion, but I think the public yes. and the members of this House would like to know why a similar, but not identical, as you point out, plan failed miserably in Vermont. And just on that point, uh, the original Vermont estimate was $267 million they'd receive from ACA-affiliated sources. And when they dealt with the federal government, it turned out that there would be only $106 million uh, that would be either reimbursable or, or direct funding. How are we sure that our uh, reimbursement estimates from any federal sources are accurate? 
Well, first of all, I'm quite certain that they didn't deal with the federal government because I don't think anybody in the federal government is answering questions like that these days. Uh, so if you, if you think you read something in the report that says they got answers from Washington, I think you're misreading it. No, I didn't say they got answers. I said they, they estimated based on the applicable right. laws, the it reimbursement is, rates, et cetera. Well, I, I, I think it sounded, it certainly sounded to me like you were saying that that's what they were hearing from Washington. But in any event, I don't know what number you're referring to. I don't know what that number refers to. I don't know what the larger, earlier number that you were citing refers to. And so there's hardly any way to respond to that question. It would make a lot more sense if you looked at the economic analysis about the New York Health Act and said your analysis says we're going to get we might get so many dollars from Washington, here's why we won't. I'd be happy to have that discussion with you, but there is no point in discussing. Sure. Well, believe it or not, I'm it, not going to ask you about Vermont next. Oh, okay, good. Um, Out-of-state employees, what yes. would be a company's liability in, in paying their health insurance if a person, say, lived in New Jersey and worked for a company in Manhattan? Under the bill, if the company provides the health benefits for that out-of-state employee, uh, they may deduct that expenditure uh, from the assessment. Okay, and what about companies that have existing, or even labor unions that have existing contracts uh, or deals with their retirees that they will pay their health care costs? Are people going to lose their current coverage in favor of the single payer program? On the matter of retirees, under the bill as enacted, nobody would lose anything. How we will uh, deal with people with, this, with that kind of situation uh, does need to be worked out. The bill specifies that uh, the newly created board will develop a proposal for doing that. Let's remember the vast majority of retirees, even those with union negotiated benefits, are not in that kind of circumstance. And for the vast majority of retirees and their employers and their unions, having the, the New York Health Act come in will dramatically improve their coverage and the economic situation of the union and the union's fund and the employer. I, I, I appreciate you saying that, but. But by you saying that, that the majority of these retirees will have better coverage is not the same as what you started out by saying is that they still need to, this detail needs to be worked out somehow. Well, Shouldn't we there work are, that out before we vote? Well, there are, some, there are some retirees who may have essentially prepaid uh, their retirement coverage. We will need to work out a system to make sure that they don't lose anything that they've put in. The major problem is retirees who move out of state, because retirees who stay in New York State will have no problem. Right. Retirees who move out of state, uh, that is an issue that needs to be resolved. The bill establishes a mechanism for resolving that. It could end up getting resolved before the bill becomes law, which okay. may take some time, I recognize that, uh, in which case, the bill can be modified. So a, a certain, just a, another topic, and this is my last question, a certain other state that we won't mention uh, offered a plan that exceeded the Cadillac plan, the, the, uh, the ACA's top plan. Um, what level could you sort of estimate, in other words, how much of a percentage would uh, this single payer program pay for people's insurance? The other state happened to be 94%. Under the New York Health Act, the actuarial value would be, uh, would be 100%. Uh, because it is not, strictly speaking, an insurance plan, and, and it is certainly not employment-based insurance, uh, I think the, the best analysis is that the Cadillac tax does not apply, okay. which is an important benefit of the New York Health Act. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. On the bill? You're welcome. On the bill, Mr. Borelli. Uh, I guess not. It's a bad bill. I'll sit down.
Thank you, Mr. Morelli.